Hello, I'm Craig from Carsalton Advisory. This tutorial series covers the Excel 2019 Expert Curriculum. Download Microsoft's files linked in the description to work through them together as we continue Section 2.2, Formulate and Validate Data. Let's get started. So with this section of practice tasks, we're going to spend a lot of time on data validation. Data validation is actually something I think is worthwhile to have in your toolbox. I do use it a fair amount. Uh, so it's not just one of those things you need to know for the exam. It's probably worth uh, incorporating into what you do on a more regular basis. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the 2.2 workbook. And once we're on the 2.2 workbook, instead of being on the custom data formatting tab, we're just going to tab one over to the data validation tab. And our first task is going to be to select cell B2 which is the one that has 6% in it. And we're going to create a data validation rule that restricts data entry to values between 0 and 1. Or in other words, that's between 0% and 1%. So we're going to go in the ribbon into the data tab. We're going to find data validation, which is over here on the uh, just to the right hand side of center. And we'll open up data validation. Uh, once uh, data validation is open, we're going to be on the first tab within it called settings. And we're going to change where it says any value. We're going to go to a decimal. OK, and so what this will uh, allow is for us to put a minimum and a maximum value. Uh, and decimal is important. If we had just let it as a whole number, um, people would be able to choose 0% or 100%. They wouldn't be able to do anything in between. So let's make sure that we have this as a decimal between. And our minimum is going to be 0. And our maximum, we have to think in percentage terms, is going to be 1%, or excuse me, uh, 1, which is 100%. Now, you know, in reality, I probably wouldn't use this in this particular situation, uh, unless I'm in a business that frequently gives out 100% uh, interest loans. Uh, I, I might have this as a more likely range between, you know, let's say our likely loans might be between, say, 2.5% and 10%. Uh, in which case I would adjust these values to be more reflective of what I'd expect uh, myself or my coworkers to use on a, on a normal basis. Uh, so our next task is to include an input message titled interest rate and then uh, some guidance text in it. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll, we'll click to the right here onto input message and it's, we're gonna leave this toggle to show input message when cell is selected and we can have a title here so our title is going to be interest rate. And this is one of those things a lot of people have used data validation, but they're not as familiar with the input message or the error alert side of it. So that's one, one thing that uh, a lot of you may be picking up. So in our message, we're going to put uh, please enter a value between uh, 0 and 1. Uh, and again, I don't know if I'd have zero and one, I would probably have a percent. But uh, anyways, uh, next, we're going to go to the stop style message and uh, or excuse me, in the error alert section, and we're going to have a stop style message. So there could be a warning, there could be an information and it'll it'll note the uh, uh, the icon that comes with it. So this is what will happen if the person puts in the wrong type of data. So if they put in a three or a minus two, this would pop up for them. So the title is going to be invalid interest rate. And our message, uh, I'm going to shorten this up. And I'm just going to call it, uh, please enter uh, value between zero and one. Now on the exam, make sure you put in exactly what they have. Usually what I would do on the exam, I would actually select the text that they wanted, copy it, and then paste it in. That way I could be sure that I, I had it exactly the way they wanted. I've shortened this up a little bit so you don't have to watch me type quite as much. Uh, now that all three of those are done, I'm going to click OK. And so you'll notice the first off, um, when I select this cell, a message pops up. OK, so there's our message and it says an interest rate. Please enter a value between 0 and 1. Um, so there's zero and here's one. So, you know, that's why I probably, if I was to do this in my, my work, I wouldn't be say between zero and one, I would say between, uh, you know, zero and 100%. So at least that way the people, uh, understand, but, uh, let's see what happens if I try and put something bigger than that. So let's go to uh, 200, uh, because it's a percent. And so here is my stop message that we, uh, had put up and uh, that we had set up and it says please enter a value between zero and one so i can select retry 
and now I can try uh, minus one. All right, and again, my invalid, uh, my stop message has popped up and is telling me to enter a value in the proper range. So we'll retry and we will try a uh, number that should work. Oops. All right, so let's try, uh, let's see now, 50% will work now. Anyways, uh, so this is the, uh, this wraps up this set of practice tasks. All right, next, uh, what we're going to do is go into cell B3, which is this uh, corresponds with this periods in years. And we're going to include an input message. Uh, um, we're going to create a data validation rule that restricts data entry to positive values with a minimum of one and a maximum of 30. Uh, so this time I'm going to use my keyboard, which is normally how I would do it. I would hit Alt, A for data, and V for validation. Second V opens up the message box here. Our settings, um, we're going to Alt A to allow, um, instead of any value, uh, what we want is whole numbers. Now, the, uh, the textbook isn't great here in that it doesn't specify whether they need to be whole numbers or not. Like you could have a five and a half year uh, loan. Like there's, there's really no reason in my opinion why you wouldn't have uh, decimals here. So I, I believe the exam is more specific, that it, it will tell you a whole number or an integer um, if you want to use this. Uh, otherwise, you could use decimals. And, and in this case, the, the formula would run just fine, even in that case. So uh, we're going to leave it in uh, for data here between. We could um, also have not between equal to. There, there are a lot of other uh, options that we can do with this here. But we'll leave it as between. Our minimum is going to be 1. I'll tab down to 30. Now, rather than hit OK, I'm going to hit uh, Control Page Down, which takes me to the input message. Uh, I'm going to tab into title, and they've told us, let me advance that for you guys. They've told us that we need to have a message called loan period. Lean period, I certainly don't qualify for that right now, period. Uh, and uh, we're going to say please enter a value between 1 and 30. Now in this case, uh, it does make more sense. Um, to have it say between 1 and 30. What I would do, and again, don't don't change it on the exam, but I'm going to change this in my practice task. I'm going to say, please enter a whole value, or I could also say, please enter an integer between 1 and 30, because that's really what we're looking for here. All right, next we're going to go to error alert. Uh, and we are going to use an, a stop style message again. Um, so we can leave style uh, still as stop. The title is going to be, let me advance this for you guys, sorry. Uh, a stop style error message, and it's going to be invalid loan period. And the error message is going to be that the loan period you entered is invalid. So I'll do that. And I will leave it at that. Uh, just, uh, again, on the exam, I would just copy and paste the value in here so I know I didn't miss anything. Uh, I'll hit OK here. And so, yeah, when we click on this, you're going to see this uh, input message. So now it says, please enter an integer between 1 and 30. So let's check, that, check this out and see if it works. So here's our 1, and that works. Let's try 30. That works. Let's try 31. And here is our invalid loan period message box, uh, where it tells us the loan period we entered is invalued. So we'll try. I'll try one and a half. And again, it doesn't allow that decimal. So let's retry it again here. We'll do two. And we know that everything works here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go into cell B4, uh, which corresponds with principle here. Now, the practice exams are really thorough with, with these particular types of uh, data validation, but they don't show everything, and I'll explain a little bit more here as we go into it. So let's go Alt uh, A for my data tab, V for validation, and a second V to bring up this message box. Uh, so we're going to go uh, here again. We need to have a whole number. Uh, and I only know that because I checked uh, the results. Uh, there wasn't enough guidance in the practice test to really tell you whether you could use a decimal or not, which 
which is, you know, I'd expect a little bit better, I'll be honest. Um, so we're going to select a whole number. Now you'll notice there's a whole list here. There's decimals, which, uh, which we used in the first example, uh, but there's also a list. You can have date ranges, you can have time ranges, you can restrict it to a certain number of characters. Now, um, I'm after this is done, I'm going to, as a bonus, I'm going to go through the list option for you because I think you need to know that for the exam or, or not that you need to, but I think you should understand that for the exam. It's, it's one of the uh, data validation tools that I use most frequently, and certainly it's in the text. It's certainly testable. Uh, but for this particular example, we're going to go to whole number here again. Now, why it's a whole number? I don't know, a decimal would be fine, but uh, the results show whole number. But now for the data, instead of between, we want to have greater than. So when I select greater than here, you'll notice that before we had a minimum and a maximum, now we just have a minimum. So in this case, we want to restrict it to positive values. So that would be my minimum is zero. And now when we go to the input message, we're gonna say loan principal, you can't have a negative loan. And our input message is, please I enter a value greater than zero. Uh, our error alert, again, is going to be a stop style. Title is going to be invalid. Loan principal. And our text is going to be... Uh, again, I'm going to shorten this. Don't do this on the, on the exam. All right, we'll click OK here. And there's our input text uh, message. Uh, and let's test this out. Let's go zero. And here's my invalid loan principal message pops up. So we'll hit retry. We'll go 100,000 and it still works for us. So it would appear that every positive number works. Let's try minus one, and my invalid loan principal message pops up again here. So that wraps up this section of practice tasks. Now, like I said, I'm gonna go uh, as a bonus here, I'm gonna go and demonstrate a list as well. Uh, but if you only wanna do what's the, the practice task in the text, you can sign off here. Otherwise, uh, hold on here and continue watching and, and, and we'll show you something uh, in addition. So uh, what we'll show is the list function. And so let's go into our periods. Uh, so I guess to set the stage, let's imagine that we are a, uh, a company that provides loans, but we don't offer loans of any or of all periods. We, let's say we only offer a certain uh, basket of loan periods. So let's go into my data validation, Alt-A-V-V. Uh, we'll uh, control page up for me so that I can get into my validation criteria. So now for allow, instead of a whole number, I'm going to do a list. Now I'll actually show you two ways to do a list. Uh, so let's say that we only offer loans for periods of two years, four years, five years, and ten years. So how could I do that? Well, the first way we could do it is right here in this source. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I can do a two, I can do a four, I can do a five, and I can do a ten. And then this my input message. Uh, let's call it loan period. Uh, let's go please select a loan period. Uh, error alert. And we don't have to worry so much about an error alert because um, there's a drop down box. But uh, we can leave this here. And I'll show you why in a second. So again, these are our loan periods. Uh, you could use any loan period that you want. But as a demonstration here, let's click OK. All right. So now when we go into this period, you'll notice there is a drop down arrow box. Uh, so our message still is the same. Please select the loan period. Now what happens, I click this drop-down arrow, and there is a drop-down list of the available loan periods. So again, my, this company, we don't offer one-year loans. We don't offer seven-year loans. These are the loans that we offer. I can now make sure that any of my employees or coworkers who are using this sheet are only going to select a valid loan period uh, for my protection, for their protection. So this can be a very handy tool. So let's go to five here, and uh, sure enough, it still works. Uh, let's try one of our other years, too. So now our payment's a lot higher, uh, and 10. All right, so that's we know that that works. 
Uh, now, what happens if I try and type into this cell? Let's say I want to have 25 year. And now is when my invalid loan period message box pops up. So that's still still uh, worth having right now. So we'll click retry. I'll cancel. Let me put a valid number. So there's my 10. I'll go back to 2. All right, so the second way I would do a list is, um, in, well, let's... Uh, Let's do our list range here. So let's go uh, loan periods. All right, and so now what I'm going to do is within Excel here, I'm going to type my valid loan periods. Two, what did I have before? Two, four, five. Let's add a 10 here, and we'll go 15. We'll go a little bit further. Now here's my extra trick here. Um, I do what's called a stretch row. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a skinny row here. I'm going to do that by going Alt-H-O-H, -H, which allows me to set my row height. I usually set it at 5, but that's arbitrary. That's just what works for me. I also color it, uh, which is going to be Alt-H and H, and then I use this dark gray color. And so that doesn't really mean anything except to me as a user, because when I see that, I know that, oh, okay, this is a stretch row. And what is a stretch row? Well, let me demonstrate. Let's go back into periods here. We're going to go Alt A A, excuse me, Alt A V V, and now for my in my list, instead of this source being these values that I've typed in, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select these cells, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one more into that stretch row. So I have everything down to row 18. It shows here. Now I'm going to go OK. It's showing in my source that that is the range. And I'm going to click OK. And so now when we go to this drop down box, it shows the values 2, 4, 5, 10, and 15, just like I had down there. You'll notice this space there, and that's because of the stretch row. Now that will allow someone to have a blank value in here. Uh, so it may not work in every situation. You may not want a blank, in which case you don't want to use a stretch row. Now, Normally, I wouldn't have this uh, right on the same tab as my loan payment analysis as where the calculations are just because of clutter. So usually I put this on a, I'd usually have a tab at the back of my workbook, which would have all of these types of ranges on it for me. You could even hide that workbook if you didn't want anyone to adjust it. Now, a stretch row. So here's the beauty of a stretch row. Uh, let's say that we want to, um, well, first off, let's see if my range was just like this. Uh, and so what would happen is I would want to add row tw uh, 20 year loan and I'd add 20 and then my drop down list wouldn't include that 20. It's not smart enough to realize that I added an additional value to that row. Now what the stretch row does is that reminds me as the user, I'm like, all right, if I insert a row and I'm going to do that by hitting control plus, uh, I'm now going to select 20 inside here. And because it is above this stretch row, it's automatically going to get incorporated into this list. So when I pop this open, we got 10, we got 15, and we have 20. So as long as I insert above that stretch row, oops, I'm going to have be able to add as many new values in here as I want. If I add them below the stretch row, it's not going to show up. So when we look here, 35 is there, but the 40 is not. So there's a, a couple extra tips. On the exam, you're not going to have to worry about stretch rows or anything else like that. I could see them including a list question uh, for data validation. So I think it's valuable to know how to do a list. The stretch row and such is more just to make you a better Excel user. Uh, so that wraps up what I have for this video. Uh, thanks for sticking with me through to the end here. And uh, make sure you give this a thumbs up. Um, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know if this has been valuable to you or not, or if you'd like to see more, or uh, if I talk too much, let me know that as well. Thanks for watching, this is Craig with Carshalton Advisory.